Good evening. It is January 20th, and this is the regular meeting of Troy City Council. Please silence your electronic devices for the duration of the meeting. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. Uh, the Pledge of Allegiance tonight is being led by some young men from Boy Scout Troops 365 and 1033 this evening. And the invocation is by Mr. Tom Kendall. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you bestow upon us throughout the year and the week to week. Be watchful over us, keep us safe, keep those in, in the city safe who, who protect us, the fire and the police, and be with our troops who are overseas fighting for our freedoms. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. And if you boys have any questions after the meeting or need any signatures, well, you're welcome to come up to council after the meeting, and uh, we'll be happy to handle that for you. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Pete. Here. Mr. Twist. Here. Mr. Phillips. Here. Mr. Swayzer. Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Kendall. Here. Mr. Clark. Here. Mrs. Oda. Here. Mrs. Snee. Here. All members are present. Tonight we have a public hearing on Ordinance 01-2015. Mrs. Knight, please read that ordinance. Ordinance number 01-2015, ordinance change the zoning of 40 parcels in the city of Troy, Ohio, from M2 Light Industrial District to OC1 Office Commercial District. I now declare the public hearing open. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of the ordinance? Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the ordinance? Seeing none, then I declare the public hearing closed. Mrs. Knight, please read a summary of the minutes of the January 5th meeting of Troy City Council. Minutes of Council, January 5, 2015. Committee reports, personnel committee uh, gave an oral report regarding reappointments to the Board of Tax Appeals and the reappointments of Mark Douglas and Kent Kazmaier were approved. Resolution number R1, 2015, authorizing use of internet auction should there be surplus property to sell was given first, given first reading and adopted. Ordinance number 01, 2015, a rezoning was given first reading. Following various comments, council adjourned at 7.23 p.m. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Move to accept the minutes as read. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Clark and seconded by Mr. Phillips to accept the minutes. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Tremblay? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mrs. Snead? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Minutes are approved. The Recreation and Parks Committee met, and Chairman Mr. Brock Heath has their reports this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate it. We have two items, and uh, we'll just jump right into this first one. Uh, on January 13, 2015, this committee met to consider recommending an agreement related to the 2015 Troy Strawberry Festival, including the festival location. TSF has requested permission to continue the festival to incorporate the downtown area, as well as continue to hold festival activities at the levy location, Hobart Arena parking lot, and the stadium parking lot. The change from the 2014 event is that for 2015, the venue also includes that North Market Street will also be closed from Water Street to Staunton Road. Water Street will be closed uh, to through traffic from Oxford Street to Mulberry Street, and the Sunday car show will be held on part of the closed North Market Street and the parking lot of the North Market Street ball field. The city has a legitimate governmental interest of preserving public safety and crowd management during the festival. Therefore, some activities should be limited during the actual festival events and for an hour before and after the events of the day, as the hour just before and the hour following the 
closing are also extremely busy. So the recommendation is uh, of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to enter into an agreement regarding the Troy Strawberry Festival to be held within the levee area of downtown, the Market Street Bridge, and the ball field parking lot during 2015, and that the Hobart Arena Stadium parking areas be used for the Friday night events, and to include the limitation of activities during and for the hour before and then after each day's events activity. This is respectfully submitted by uh, Mrs. Oda, Mr. Trembley, and myself as chair. Are there any questions from council on this report? Yes, Madam Chair. Mr. Phillips. One for Mr. Charrington. Um, Mr. Kemper, who was at the, uh, the meeting uh, for this, uh, has he come back and made any comments or posed any other questions or given any other, uh, other information off of what he spoke about at the, at the committee meeting? I've had no contact with him. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Kendall? Yes, I do have one question. Uh, the the closing of the bridge, is that for the entire weekend? Yes. Okay. This was obviously a concern about traffic flow. Well, and, and we have uh, thoroughly looked at that, and we will have fully <coughs> marked detours. Uh, it would not be possible to open every night. Uh, you know, with the placement of the booths, uh, and then with the car show early on Sunday morning, uh, it's just not feasible to close it and open it and then close it again. Uh, that's why it's important that as part of our discussions with Strawberry Festival staff that uh, we keep activity away from Community Park and uh, Adams Street Bridge in, in that area. Uh, which we have an agreement on. And so the, the police and fire chiefs are comfortable with, with keeping it closed uh, given those parameters. Okay. Now last year we just we closed one lane, right? Last year we closed one lane. Uh, we had intended on leaving westbound Water Street open uh, very early on on Saturday morning, though we recognized that foot traffic was just too great going north and south across the intersection and so we did close that uh, that part of the intersection and traffic can only come south and then go east okay. all right thank you any further questions yes uh, mrs uh, um mr titterington would you update the public on what mr livingston added yeah at, at the committee meeting um, we discussed the fact that uh, again, for preserving public safety and crowd control, crowd management, that um, some activities would not be allowed one hour prior to uh, the opening of the day, the festival day, and one hour after the closing of the festival each day. And at the time uh, when we were questioned about what those days were that we were anticipating, we mentioned Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Mr. Livingston did go back and he, he discovered there are some activities that occur on Friday night. So in the uh, legislation, he wanted to make sure that Friday night was covered as well. Again, one hour before and one hour after in the evening on Friday uh, uh, when the event is actually occurring. That's the only change. Uh, I believe we may have said, uh, because the festival itself opens, I believe, at 10 o'clock on Saturday. However, the opening session, the opening ceremony, occurs at 9.15, and he wanted to make sure we included that. And so the hour was adjusted to, to capture that as well. Thank you. Any further questions? Madam President. Mr. Clark. Pardon me, I've <coughs> um, uh, For Mr. Titterington, I just wanted to reiterate that ODAT is aware of <coughs> the closings and has approved it, and, and public safety is not a concern with all these roads closed That's and correct. we're all in with it. That's correct. Okay, thank you. <coughs> you may continue, Mr. Heath, with your next <coughs> report. Thank you, Madam President. And the second report is uh, same date on January 13, 2015. This committee met to consider the request of the Board of Park Commissioners 
that the board be authorized to execute an addendum to the lease of the property known as Barnum Park to allow the, the Troy Civic Theater uh, to use uh, the use of additional public property on which a shed structure will be placed. The shed will only be used for the storage of crops. Expenses to purchase, place, and maintain the shed would be the responsibility of TCT. However, once uh, placed on the public property, the shed will then become city property. So it is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Board of Park Commissioners to execute the addendum to the lease of the property known as the Barnum Park to allow Troy Civic Theater uh, incorporated the use of additional public property on which a shed structure would be placed. This is respectfully submitted by Mrs. Oda, Mr. Tremblay, and myself as chair. Are there any questions from council on this report? Thank you, Mr. Heath. We now open the meeting to citizen comments. <coughs> there is a two minute time limit at this point in the meeting, and Mr. Kerber is our timekeeper this evening. Does anyone in the audience have any questions or comments related to any of the agenda items this evening? If so, please come to the microphone and state your name and address before addressing council. Good evening. My name is Cynthia Schaefer. I live at 26 and a half North Short. Um, I think Mrs. Swisher's um, plans for the festival sounds very good. I have a couple comments. Um, I like to see that we have tables and chairs available. Um, moving the, I understand the moving the car show over to the bridge. We need tables and chairs. When you have an event, you want the people to stay and enjoy yourself. And since down, downtown has very minimal uh, chairs, I was thinking that possibly they could come up with something over on the corner of Market and Staunton there uh, by the stadium in, the, in that area that they could put some tables and chairs up because um, the car show will have music. They like to have their own music uh, down there. I thought maybe that would be a good idea. The other suggestion that I have is that last year I was understanding that um, service dogs were able, allowed to come to the parade. And since I live down by the courthouse, I was watching all these mammoth dogs with chain link uh, um, around their necks coming to the parade and I went, or to the festival and I wasn't aware that non-service uh, dogs could go there. I have a service dog and I wouldn't even take Bella down there because of it. Um, I had a dog attack a year and a half ago and I know what it feels like to, to go through that. I did see young children running around the, at downtown square with these big dogs on Sunday when I finally went down. So I'm concerned about that, that um, that would be taken care of. But uh, I think it's going to be a great um, event, and I just would like to see some tables and chairs where we can go and sit and, and enjoy ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Debbie Char. I live at 1519 Surrey Road. I just have a couple questions concerning your report, Brock. Sure. Um, one was uh, Mr. Titterington had made mention of certain activities that would be uh, not permitted to take place one hour before and one hour after, and I'm wondering if those activities would be specified to the public as to what could or could not take place in that time before and time after. I think it's legitimate for the public to know what's going to be prohibited prior to council taking action. Um, the second um, issue with the shed, um, if I understood you correctly, you said that the shed, once it's placed on the city property, will become city property. And I guess my question is, has council considered um, what materials, are they having any input as to what that structure will be made of and how and who will be responsible for maintaining that structure over the years? So I would ask that you can make those considerations before we um, give permission to have something done because there's a long-term effect to make sure that we're maintaining things in a way that keeps the beauty um, of the park and of the city for people for years to come. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, would you care to address these others? Sure, I will take those in order. Um, uh, the restrictions are listed out in uh, the ordinance for the Strawberry Festival. They include sale of wares by peddlers and interim uh, vendors uh, who are not associated with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Strawberry Festival. And it's one hour before and one hour after. Uh, uh, restriction on uh, weapons uh, as 
well as uh, non-service <coughs> pets. So service, service animals are allowed. Uh, and then uh, writing, painting, chalking, otherwise permanently or temporary in the of parking <coughs> on the public streets, sidewalks, alleys, and the other public areas in the event area. Uh, those are the activities that are listed in the ordinance uh, that would be restricted during those time periods. Okay. Um, regarding the Barn in the Park shed, um, they did uh, receive a recent uh, <coughs> were granted a permit. Um, the uh, park board has recommended uh, allowing the shed uh, to be placed. They are required uh, to maintain it. That would be part of the, that is part of the addendum uh, to the co uh, contract with the uh, Troy Civic Theater. Um, and so uh, all of those issues are addressed. And it's also my understanding that the shed would um, <coughs> replicate or look similar in appearance to the barn. Yes. That, that color-wise and everything, it's going to... It will complement the main structure. To that. Any further questions or comments from the audience? Okay, before we move into resolutions, uh, the Personnel Committee has a couple of uh, reports this evening also. Thank you, Madam President. <coughs> the first item we have on our agenda is uh, to provide council approval for uh, the mayor's request to reappoint to the City of Troy Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund Committee, Russ Thayer. Um, his term will commence immediately and terminate December the 31st, 2018. Um, I'd like to make that motion for Russ Thayer to be on the Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund Committee. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Clark and seconded by Mr. Schweizer to appoint uh, Mr. Russ Thayer to the Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund Committee. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Schweizer? Yes. Mr. Tremley? Yes. Mr. Handel? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mrs. Steve? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. The appointment is approved. Madam President, the other the other item we have is uh, provided for council approval is the mayor's request for reappointment the, to the Enterprise Zone Tax Incentive Review Council the following Roy Carlson of Troy, and also for council approval is the mayor's request for appointment to the Enterprise Zone Tax Incentive Review Council, Jordan Romberger of Troy. Uh, these terms would commence immediately and terminate October 19th, 2017. I would make that motion to appoint both of them to the Enterprise Zone Tax Incentive Review Council. I'll second that. It's been moved by Mr. Clark and seconded by Mr. Twist to appoint Mr. Roy Car Carlson and Mr. Jordan Romberger to the Enterprise Zone Tax Incentive Review Council. Uh, Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Schweizer? Yes. Mr. Tremley? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Zoda? Yes. Mr. Snee? Yes. Mrs. Snee, sorry. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Motion is approved. Is we have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on then to resolutions and ask Mrs. Knight to read resolution R2 2015. Resolution number R2 2015, resolution authorizing the Board of Park Commissioners of the City of Troy, Ohio to execute an addendum to the lease agreement for the barn in the park. <coughs> this has been recommended uh, by the Board of Park Commissioners. It will authorize uh, the uh, installation of a shed structure. Uh, the uh, Troy Civic Theater will be required to handle the installation and then to maintain the structure, although it will become the property of the city. This is the first reading. Are there any questions from council on the resolution? Move for suspension. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Clark and seconded by Mr. Phillips to suspend the rules. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Tremblay? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mrs. Steve? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Schweizer? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved by Mr
to adopt the resolution. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mrs. Snead? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Tremblay? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Moving on to ordinances, I ask Mrs. Knight to please read Re Ordinance 01-2015. Ordinance number 01-2015, ordinance changing the zoning of 40 parcels in the city of Troy, Ohio, from M2, Light Industrial District, to OC1, Office Commercial District. Uh, this has been recommended by the Troy Planning Commission. This, these parcels were uh, known as the former Hobart Brothers ITW factory site and two parking lots. Uh, public hearing was held this evening, second reading. And this will now go to the Community and Economic Development Committee for a meeting. Uh, Chairman Mr. Twist, do you have anything to say, please? Yes, uh, I'd like to announce we will be meeting January 27th at 6 p.m. Uh, to be able to provide council a recommendation on that. Thank you. Mrs. Knight, please read Ordinance 02 2015. Ordinance number 02 2015, ordinance authorizing the use of public areas for the 2015 Troy Strawberry Festival and authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio to enter into an agreement, therefore. Uh, this includes that the Troy Strawberry Festival would pay to the city the amount of $14,150. It covers the location of uh, the festival and any prohibitions. This is the first reading. Are there any questions from Council on this ordinance? I'll move for suspension. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Phillips and seconded by Mr. Trumbly uh, to suspend the rules. Mrs. Knight, please call the rule. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mrs. Steed? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Madam President, I'd like to excuse myself from the vote as my wife is Troy Strawberry Festival Chairman, and that would avoid the conflict, the appearance of a conflict. <coughs> Mr. Tremley? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Move for adoption. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Kendall and seconded by Mr. Phillips to adopt the ordinance. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mrs. Sneed? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Madam President, I'd like to excuse myself from the vote in order to avoid the appearance of a conflict. Mr. Trevely? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. That completes the business portion of tonight's meeting. Mrs. Knight, are there any communications or announcements? No, there are not. Mayor Beamish, do you have any comments for us this evening? Very briefly, thank you for the reappointments to two different committees. Appreciate that. They're good people. That's it. Mr. Titterington, any comments this evening? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a reminder to the folks, um, residences, that uh, you still have your Christmas trees that are alive. Probably not very much alive anymore. Uh, but they can still be placed out at the curb. Do not include decorations, do not wrap them in anything, just leave them at the curb. Uh, we will be picking those up uh, until and through January 30th, so you've got 10 days uh, to dispose of those. Uh, the second thing is the, uh, the new parking kiosk that replaced the approximately 50 parking meters at the South Cherry lot uh, that did go operational today. Um, it was uh, and continues to be a learning experience for all those who are uh, involved. Uh, we are in education mode. We are not you know, ticketing people just because they can't figure out what to do and how to do it. Uh, we do want to remind people, though, when you uh, leave your car, lock your car, memorize your license plate, because that starts the whole process of getting uh, uh, parking time. Uh, and then just read, read the prompts, uh, there are only three or four of them, uh, and, and you should be good. But um, uh, we are uh, also updating the sign. Uh, we had some rogue staff that took some liberties with the wording uh, and uh, exempted weekends, uh, when in fact the only, uh, only weekend day that is 
technically exempt in the ordinance is Sunday. So we will be changing that from weekends and holidays to Sundays and holidays uh, as the uh, non-enforced uh, days of the week. Um, final, uh, final thing, and I apologize, I have to be very brief uh, in summary. Uh, but I was asked to give a, a brief uh, overview of this morning's incident. Uh, we did have an officer involved uh, shooting. It was non-fatal. Uh, it was uh, uh, Officer Jim Short answered a, uh, a welfare check call. Basically, uh, I believe he, uh, we received a complaint that there might have been some noise, uh, some disturbance going on in one of the apartments over on Mayfield Drive. Uh, and he answered him, he was, uh, uh, he encountered a 31-year-old male with a knife. Um, he did uh, have to have to shoot, but again, it was non-fatal. Non um, the, uh, the injured is in Miami Valley Hospital. Officer Short was not injured. Uh, he is on paid <coughs> administrative leave. Um, Ohio uh, Bureau of Criminal Investigations was asked to assist in the investigation, and uh, hopefully we'll have that done uh, fairly quickly, but there really is no timetable. They we want them to be thorough. Uh, that's really all I can say about it, but I did want to give an update. Thank you. Um, I have one other curiosity question more than anything else. Um, how many locations are there that can set off the Siren systems. I always thought it was just at my apparently own one, but apparently well, there are too many. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't have the exact number. We have two or three different locations, one of which is at the water plant, which is where, uh, as we were stepping, I, I, my understanding was is that supervisory staff was walking the process through with one of our newer employees, and somehow, though we didn't fingerprint or find, you know, uh, find out who it was, didn't ask, but uh, uh, somebody triggered it erroneously and it was immediately shut off, but you know, you have to do a cycle once it starts. Mm -hmm. okay. I was just kind of curious to know how many, how many there were. Um, Mr. Kerber, any comments this evening for us? No, thank you for the opportunity, but I have nothing bad on President. Right. Thank you for being here. Mr. Stickle? I have no comments, Madam Chair. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to congratulate the firemen who were involved in the water rescue of a pet a couple of weeks ago and uh, received recognition from the uh, PETA organization. I think they did a great job and it was probably good practice for them. Um, also, would like to express appreciation to the street department for the good job done on clearing the streets following the recent snow and ice that we had and to all the other employees who had to work out in the cold weather. Also, we had, a, I thought, a very um, nice Martin Luther King celebration this past week, past Monday night, or Monday morning, and um, had a nice turnout for that, and appreciated everyone that was able to come out. Does anyone on council have any comments? Mrs. Oda? Um, I, as a citizen of the city and um, not really anything to do with city council, I would like to ask the city to consider leaving the lights up on the trees downtown uh, just to give it a try. I understand that it might not be a feasible thing to do, but they're already up and it seems like we could leave them up and give it a try. I think there's a lot of support for leaving the lights up. Um, I think it would enhance the town and make it a very beautiful place even during the summer. Um, just like to see those lights left up. Any other comments from council? <coughs> Mr. Trumpa? I think those lights are kept up until Valentine's yeah. Day. Mm -hmm. There's kind of a short window unless these trees start getting leaves on <coughs> The last time it was difficult to take off without harming the tree. I mean, they're put up with when the trees don't have leaves and they're really taken off while they still don't have leaves. Oh. Well, my thought is I've been to a lot of towns. I've seen trees that are left with the lights year round, and it's awesome. And I think it would be awesome in Troy 
Plus, I'd make sure that we didn't harm the trees. And then, Madam Chair, there are actually several considerations that uh, uh, make that not really possible for us to do. Uh, number one is after Valentine's Day, that is the target week that we take them down. Uh, the electrical staff who is uh, responsible for the lights uh, have to work on the priorities that were deferred during the winter, start gearing up for their spring plan, uh, and so they don't have as much, nearly as much time as they do over the winter time. Um, the other uh, consideration is, is uh, unbeknownst to, uh, I think, all of us, uh, they are making repairs to those lights uh, daily. Uh, at least once a week, they have to replace strands due to va vandalism or some significant issue where the entire uh, loop of lights has to be replaced, which typically involves, uh, in, in most if not all cases, involves bringing in the, uh, the lift truck, uh, having uh, two, at least two of our electricians dedicated to, uh, uh, to doing that work. Uh, those lights are throwaway lights. Um, they are uh, the cheaper lights. It's easier to dispose of them than to try to work through all the lights that might uh, fail uh, in while they're stored. <coughs> Uh, and so they are not of the quality that are going to last for very long. And uh, without the staff available to constantly monitor and maintain them, um, they would not last a year. We know that. Uh, and as lights fail, then you would start to see gaps in the lighting. Uh, we can try to, right now, try to replace them and keep all the lights lit as much as possible given the holiday season but that becomes uh, extremely uh, difficult to do uh, after, after Valentine's Day. The other consideration is, is that, um, uh, to Mr. Tremley's point, the trees that we have that are uh, in the, that are the uh, downtown streetscape trees are ginkgos. Uh, I just don't want to try to impress anybody because I, if a ginkgo slapped me, I wouldn't know what, what it was. I did have a conversation with the park superintendent, who's also a certified arborist. Uh, so he told me if they are ginkgos, they are rapid growth uh, trees uh, with relatively narrow uh, root systems. And that's what, what makes them good, good trees. They provide a canopy, but they don't overwhelm the, uh, uh, the streetscape and they don't grow into the, uh, the streets. Because of their rapid growth, because of the type of bark that they have, uh, they will do what's known as, and I'm putting this in quotes because I didn't make this up, uh, they, the, the bark over time will girdle the, uh, the strands of lights and actually will grow around the strands of lights. Uh, he does not recommend that we keep the lights up uh, year round uh, for that reason. It will damage the trees. Uh, those trees, because it's in the concrete, because it's near the conduit, and you run all of the electric and the utilities underground, uh, it, you know, it becomes um, a, uh, a concern when you have to replace one of those trees. It's probably two, $250 to $300 to, uh, to replace those trees when they are damaged and they die. And uh, he says if, if, when lights are there for at least a couple of seasons anyway, without being taken down and put away, that there is a serious risk of killing the trees. Uh, so for all those reasons, we don't think it's a, a, a wise idea. Uh, Mary and I have discussed it um, along with the staff. And, uh, and so our timetable continues to be around Valentine's Week. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I understand. I think it would be beautiful. Wish there was a way to do it. Any further comments from Council this evening? Madam President. Mr. Clark? Yeah, just for uh, Mr. Turner and if he has any updates on the Lighthouse, or at least when the Lighthouse oh, is going to finish. Uh, my understanding is it is being painted right now. Uh, it is up in Michigan, still being manufactured in the painting process. Uh, we don't want to put it up. Uh, <coughs> time, time it when we put it up uh, because we don't want to put it up during the really cold weather and we're to let the paint cure so that the paint doesn't crack and you know, it's, 
it was there for a while, but it is still on time. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from council? Anyone on staff have any comments this evening? Anyone else in the audience have any comments? Connor, 1210 South Clay Street, Troy, Ohio. First, I'd like to thank uh, Bobby Phelps for uh, giving me the information to give me a better uh, understanding of the uh, assessment for the grass mowing. And uh, I hear constantly that uh, we are good stewards of the citizens and the Troy's money. And Troy has to look at, you know, they were always looking at other cities and what they charge. And that seemed to me that this is what has happened on the grass. We looked at uh, four or five different uh, places, Tip City, Piqua, Vandalia, Hubert Heights, and uh, lo and behold, we were uh, low. So uh, evidently with the $640,000 uh, for 25 years in our people's minds, in the council's mind, we need money, so, and they act, you know, Troy seems to act like it's an embarrassment to be, run this town on a low figure. I think they ought to be proud to be able to run this town on a low figure without having to look at other cities to see what they're charging, and if we're low, to raise ours. And I just, you know, I, it just uh, doesn't seem uh, ethical or really fair to the citizens of Troy. So, uh, this, this, is, this has given me a better understanding of why it was raised. It wasn't because of cost of uh, implementing uh, as, uh, for the grass to be cut, of uh, going out and, and looking, because that's on a regular job of the person. Writing a letter, that's on his regular job anyway. Uh, following up, you know, so it, it, it has opened my eyes of why, I understand it better, why this happened. I may not agree with it, may not like it, but I do understand it more. And uh, then we have, uh, and we've done this uh, two or three different times on looking at other cities and raising our cost. I remember when we started Stormwater, and I met, a, asked a question. Well, now Sydney is starting theirs out at uh, 87 cents or 85 cents, and I was corrected, it was either 87 or 85, whatever I was, I was two cents wrong. But anyway, ours started out at 350. And we're going to have another five, seven more years of increases on that. Plus another five or seven more years of increase on our utility bills, our trash pickup. Uh, now we double the parking meters and everything. You know, I, I think the bottom line in all this is we need money to cover the $640,000 that the city is in debt for for 25 years. That isn't fair to the citizens. We're taking it all out of the citizens' pockets. And then we have, uh, we started with Adam Street Bridge of uh, a $10 assessment on fees, on our tags. Well, that was for 10 years. But we, me, and some other citizens complained that you've got your money back in three years, more than enough, because it was over $200,000 a year you was generating. So we finally, Thanks to the city of Troy for taking it off. But by doing so, it opened the eyes of the county and they said, whoa, easy money. We're going to get $10 on our, get, on our tag fees. So the city come back and they said, well, we don't want the county to get all 20 of it. We want to get another $10 back on it for another five years. You know, I mean, I, I don't know, understand why we have to keep gouging the citizens of Troy in their billfold. If we can run a city on a lower cost and maintain it and everybody's happy, fine, that's the way it should be run. Not looking around and saying, oh, what are they paying? What are they paying? Oh, we're, hey, we're not making enough. Let's, let's, let's charge more. And these figures here that I've seen, most of them start out the first and second offense at a lower price and then gradually increase. Ours, according to this, starts out on a high $128 <coughs> the whole five times. So, you know, I, I just, it amazes me. It just, it really baffles my mind, as little as it is, 
but big enough to understand when I'm me and some other people are getting taken advantage of. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience have any comments, please? Hi, I'm Debbie Char. I am the owner of the Troy Bulk Barn and Deli at 4 West Main Street in beautiful, historic downtown Troy. Um, I have my receipt with me today from the first official day of the kiosk parking. Um, I, I must say that I, I'm impressed that Mr. Titterington made reference to the, uh, it's okay to look at me when I talk to, I, I was impressed that Mr. Titterington um, made reference to the signs that were changed because one of the very first things that we all noticed when they went up over the weekend was that it did say enforced weekends uh, except for weekends and holidays and we know that the ordinance was passed that it was to be done Monday through Saturday um, from 8 until 6. Um, my questions are a few. Um, there's a couple things with respect to that particular parking lot. When the parking lot was put into place um, and the paving job was beautiful there were some considerations that, that we had um, and some concerns that we had with how that parking lot was laid out. Now knowing that there's a kiosk, I understand why it was laid out the way that it was with the handicapped spots mean, being moved to one corner as opposed to being in the middle of the parking lot and being more accessible to folks. Um, however, the finishing of that parking lot with the paving and the striping did not complete the construction of that parking lot because there are not parking curbs. And with the recent snow and ice that we had, it became a hazard for parking in that parking lot. And while it has been publicly announced that there is no parking permitted in that lot between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., I have to question if it is Mr. Titterington as the Director of Service and Safety's uh, position to make sure that during those hours, those three hours in the world, early wee hours of the morning, um, when cars are not permitted in that lot, that that is the time when the city will maintain that parking lot. Because while they did a nice job of icing and shoveling and plowing the drive through, they did a horrible job of maintaining the actual parking spaces, to which there was three and sometimes four inches of ice in those spaces. The lines were completely covered, and there, I personally witnessed several people slip and or fall getting out of or getting into their cars because that area, those spaces themselves were not maintained. I also watched cars slide over what is the paved area into the grass or bump into what is the fit building, which is Patty <coughs> Rose's building. And that's because there are no parking blocks. So I would urge you to um, look at the safety of that parking lot and as a whole, look at the safety of all the city parking lots. Um, the mayor's report that aired on the radio station, Troy Community Radio on Saturday, the mayor did indicate that and reminded us as citizens that we have an, uh, an ordinance in the city that requires us as citizens and property owners to maintain our property and to make it safe for citizens to walk the sidewalks. And I would say what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and I'm quoting one of your city employees that helped me through this process this morning, in that the city has an equal responsibility, especially in terms of safety of its citizens and in the usability of downtown to maintain all of its parking spaces. Um, and it's not just, I, I watched a salt truck go by at 945 one morning last week, and they just drove through the La Piazza Quadrant but every one of those spaces was full at that time of the day, and every one of those spaces was covered in at least two inches of ice, and people were slipping, getting in and out of their cars, and that is not making downtown safe. And if people can't feel comfortable getting out of their cars when the weather can be a little precarious, they're not going to come downtown. It's going to hurt us in some respect in terms of making downtown a viable option for people to do their shopping and to uh, spend their money with the merchants that exist down there. So I would urge you that if, if three to six is the hour in which no parking is allowed in these particular spaces, that the city also enact some kind of um, ordinance or some directive to the <coughs> safety director that that is the time, I don't care if you have to get out of your truck and shovel by hand or salt by hand in those spaces, but those spaces need to be maintained. Um, I just have a couple other points. One is that Mr. Titterington, in response to my last uh, appearance before council, um, 
circulated some information back to you all about the studies that were done in 96 and 97 and also in 2003. Um, I love when my father gets quoted back to me. I think it's great. I'm familiar with that particular study. Um, I know that that study cost the city a considerable amount of money, which I think I mentioned before, but the six lots that, the, that Wolpert and the parking committee identified in that particular report don't amount to more than 120 spaces. Uh, about 45 to 50 of them are which are designated during the business hours to either county or city employees. So effectively, there are about 100 to 118 usable spaces that exist in the downtown area, which really is not enough parking for downtown. Mrs. Oda and I ran into each other last Thursday. Um, there was not one single spot to be had on the west side of downtown within a two block radius, and that is typical for a Thursday because court is in session with the county and you cannot find a place to park until after 10 o'clock in the morning. Most of us merchants are downtown much earlier than that, and it's, it's a problem to find parking. So again, I'm going to urge you, and I'll continue to urge you, to get somebody to take action. We've spent money on more than one occasion with Wolpert to do parking studies downtown. Uh, Walpert even identified both in 97 and in 2003 that this has been a problem for the city of Troy for decades. And I would urge you not to let the problem continue to be a problem for decades and that we address it and we look into building some kind of parking structure. We find a way to do it with the county. Um, I think it would be beneficial to everyone. And I know that most, if not all, of the merchants that are downtown would even be willing to purchase parking spots at some rate so that we can help to recover that cost and secure that if there's a parking garage put in place, we will take some of those spaces and then be open, most accessible to our businesses or available for our customers. Um, two hours is questionable when you have a lot of, we have a lot of stay at home ladies in Troy, which is a lovely uh, quality of life that we can afford uh, for some of our citizens to have. And we have red hat ladies that come in downtown and when they come downtown, they're not here for just two hours. It's two <coughs> hours for those ladies to have lunch. And then if they wanna wander around and do shopping, they can be here for the better part of the day. Their kids are in school for five or six hours and they could be downtown for that amount of time too if parking wasn't an issue for them. So um, the only other last thing I have about this receipt, and I'm gonna leave it with you. Um, I paid $2 at 9-11 this morning. Um, and that is the maximum, so that's what I did. Um, however, it told me I have until seven o'clock to park when we know it doesn't enforce till six, so I've gotta believe there's some way in the education process of that kiosk <laughs> to have it programmed where your ticket, if you pay for an all day, there's no reason for the ticket to give you an, a point of time when it's not enforced or when it's past the point of being enforced. But um, I know it's an education problem, I know there's tweaking that needs to be done with it, but um, I'm quite frankly happy that the kiosk is there because now I know I'll have a space to park because nobody else wants to park there. So um, nobody wants to spend that money. But um, I'm just going to keep on you about the parking. Take some action, make something happen. And if nothing else, we've been really lucky so far this winter. Um, but I would ask you to maintain not just the lots, not just the drive through areas, but the actual spaces. Um, I did have a couple customers, not elderly, thank God, because I'd be worried about a broken hip, but some gals in their 30s that actually fell in the bakehouse quadrant parking um, because it was a solid sheet of ice getting out. The drive through area is clear, but the spaces are not. So I would ask that you pay attention to that. Thank you. Madam President, if you indulge me for just another few minutes, this lady here on the snow issue <coughs> rang a thing in my mind and I was going to say something about it and forgot, but it deals with the snow. I know out there in, uh, on Surrey, the kids walking to school out there, the snow plows pile the snow up on the uh, curbs or on the, uh, where you, cro you know, come to the end of your walk and then you go out into the street. Well, it's piled up there and the kids are having to climb over these piles of snow. I don't think that's very safe for the kids to be climbing up over the snow getting, getting to school. I mean. You could plow the snow on around and leave that clear or come back and at least clear that out on all of your openings where it was mandatory to make it hand handicap accessible. Well, we can't even, the ones that aren't handicapped can't even get over them. Thank you.
Anyone else in the audience have any comments this evening? Thank you all for attending tonight's meeting. Make it a peace-filled week. Meeting adjourned.